Hey Penny, happy January 2024. 20th of January 2024, the month is galloping along. As you know, I bought this iPad. It was actually reconditioned from Amazon. And you remember I bought this book, Change Your Story, Change Your Life. Now look, I am almost halfway through this book. I spent a very long time journaling about my past, how I viewed my past, how my past and my memories and interpretation of my childhood and my growing up years, as well as, you know, the intervening years, created the image that I have of myself, of who I think I am. So it was a slow and, and studied and inspected start to the year but I have to tell you and 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 by the way you know I I had um, a comment asking me whether I was I was enjoying um, virtual planning one might call it digital planning is another way of saying it I have to tell you I am loving digital planning I just want to show you one week in my digital planner. This is the week, the first week of January. This is the sort of thing I did, what I was thinking about. And I want to show you how much journaling I've done. This is the cover of the, the, the actual journal that I chose and every one of these is a page. I have journaled and journaled and journaled my heart out. So much needed to come out. So many things that I hadn't thought about for so long um, are in this journal. I've, I've even, for the first time in my life, defined a vision board for what I want from my life. At 54, I think a lot of people are starting to think about what they actually want to achieve in their life because at 54 you start realizing that you're not really going to live forever you know this mentally beforehand but when it sinks into your bones and you and you really appreciate that you've watched loved ones pass away and if they can pass away you can pass away and you will pass away <laughs> That's when you have to decide, what is it that I really want to do for these next few years? <clears throat> What's really important to me? And I have defined, there are four areas, uh, work, home, family and friendships. This one is from 2023, last year's. Um, I decided that I didn't have really enough room to be storing things and I, I don't know, it was taking up a little bit too much of my time, I guess, because I do like to mark the days, to decorate the weeks, the important things that happen. I adore it because at the end of every month there is a reflection and you can assess your month. You can put cards in, that's something really nice. This was my 54th birthday in 2023. This is the birthday card that Stephen gave to me. We went and stayed in Glastonbury and it was the spring equinox on my birthday. <clears throat> and can you believe that after so many years of marriage, he uh, wrote to my darling bride in that, in that card and I don't ever want to get rid of such a card. But as I was saying earlier, you know that one day you have to leave everything behind. My entire wig collection will just be a whole load of rubbish. <laughs> to be discarded by those left behind. And so 
it's more important than ever for me to make the most of the time that I have. Wear those wigs, put them up, enjoy the bouffants, put on my red lipstick every single day. Um, so the reason I'm talking about this is just to say that um, coming up to the new year, I was in a very pensive and reflective mood. I had a lot of time on my hands. I had a week off before Christmas and then, of course, Christmas week. You've got, you know, your days off as well from work. But as soon as January came, um, a friend of mine came to stay for the weekend. And then that Monday, another friend came from South Africa um, and stayed for two weeks. And she's only just left. I feel so sad that she's left. Do you guys have this sort of friendship, you know, a friendship that's gone on for so long, you know each other so well, but there's still so much more to find out about each other. <clears throat> she's been here for two weeks. She's such a wonderful woman. I mean, she's almost 45 now. She's 10 years younger than me. She doesn't have a husband, never doesn't have a partner currently, and she's never had children. So her life is very different from mine, but we love to chat. We get on so well. The chemistry is so good. And we talk about the ins and outs <clears throat> of life. And as I say, the weekend before, another friend came. She brought her new partner down. I got to meet him. I really liked him. She's another one who um, I've known since I was about 26, <laughs> 26 years old. <laughs> She's 10 years older than me, funnily enough. Isn't it wonderful when you make these friendships where you've got 10 year age gaps or so or, or more, you know, you, you learn so much from that person because the older person had, is a little bit further on, um, on, on life's journey than you are. I mean, the lady that came to stay for the weekend, there is literally nothing that she hasn't tried. There's nothing that she hasn't done. If I, if I pick up the phone and say, I'm thinking of doing upholstery, she'll say, oh yeah, I did an upholstery course in 1996 and I've got all the tools and this is what you've got to do and what you've got not to do. It's so wonderful to have people that you can chat about life to. Um, I don't have any siblings. My parents have passed away. All of my family have passed away. Apart from my children and my granddaughter, all of those older generations have passed away. So the people that I know, I hold very dear. And the people who are friends are just wonderful friends. And, and But now, now that this other lady has gone back to South Africa, Steve is actually driving her to the airport now. I'm in spring cleaning mode. I started off by cleaning the glass the glass in the door but this window has not had a clean for far too long usually the blinds are down and the cats are really enjoying the fact that they can now sit in a new place by the window but I'm going to clamber up <laughs> clean this window tomorrow I will clean the outside of the window and I'll just do little bits and bobs I hope I'm not the only one who finds cleaning therapeutic. It is the deepest therapy. As you're shining that thing, whatever it might be, be it your glass or be it the door or be it furniture, you're, you're, you're going over your thoughts, you're mulling things through, you're processing, processing stuff. I guess it's the same as you do when you're asleep, but in this case, you actually get the benefit of a clean house. <laughs> we're still continuing with the kitchen you know things are not cheap to buy we have to just chip away at it but I'm going to do what I can do today and in fact there's a little bird feeder hanging on that little um, tree out there it's been empty since the autumn I'm going to fill up those bird feeders and there's nothing lovelier than enjoying watching the birds when you're just chilling out, reading your book or whatever. In fact, even the cats sit there and watch the birds. So that's how January has been so far. 
it's been more hectic, more active, more eventful than I, I thought. It kind of came in with a bang, to tell you the truth. I really thought that it was going to be more of a slow burn, but that hasn't come about. That's the amazing thing about life, is that you never know. You never know what's around the corner and how things are going to happen. And being a very optimistic person, I always assume that great things will happen when they're least expected. And isn't it wonderful that Dawn Stamper is back on YouTube? Daily Dazzle and Dawn. Let's have some nice. Daily Dazzle and Dawn is back. <laughs> she's been away for a few years because she had some personal problems within her relationship and she's just told us all about it. And she started to do reviews again. Now, I remember Dawn from when I first discovered wigs. And that's why I have quite a personal, emotional attachment to her and her channel. I used to watch her reviews and mentioned them on my own channel before because she used to she used to do reviews when she was kind of at work uh, she'd go out into the parking lot we'd sometimes see her in her office wearing her latest thing and she used to take those um, wigs which I like to call styles and really make them her own didn't she so if, if you had a monofilament part on the on the left hand side she'd flip it onto the right uh, the part that is not the monofilament cap and she used to get hold of the the water spray and spray the hair and fluff it up and tussle it up and she always used to say that it reminded her of of the heyday of her hair in the 80s and all of us ladies of a certain age were teenagers in the 80s I did my O level so I must have been 15 16 in about 85 Hi, baby. And um, it gave me so much inspiration to watch Dawn on my YouTube, on, on YouTube. I used to watch every single review, and I remember she had one video that was talking about her hair loss story, how it started, um, uh, I, 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 and talking about the stage that she was at when she actually decided to try a wig. If memory serves me uh, rightly, she, I believe, had trichotillomania and she had been pulling her hair out at the sides. Uh, and please, you know, I'm not saying anything personal and private to her. It's actually part of her, of her channel. And it had gotten so bad and she tried several things to hide it. You know, the, the sprays, the powders, the fibre, you know, the fibre powders, which we, we've all tried. I certainly have. And when, when your hair loss is at a stage that um, can be improved with those powders, it's, it's great because it kind of thickens it up, you know, and it, it hides the bald spots, etc. But after a while, no amount of powders or sprays are going to help with hair that is missing. It's not going to help when you've got, when you've got a scalp on show, scalp skin on show, with no hairs to actually hold those fibres. Um, she had her mother's support and she, she talks about the first time she, she actually bought a wig and wore it. If you're at that stage, you must understand that when you first put a wig on your head, you are actually quite alarmed by the amount of hair that you have on your head, the amount of... Um, of colour and the density of the hair, you are used to seeing yourself very sparse, quite kind of a bit like an egghead. I certainly did. And then when I would put a wig like this on, I'd think, oh my God, why have they got to make it so thick and dense at the front of my head? It looks so unnatural, but of course it doesn't look unnatural at all. You know, that's what people are supposed to look like. <laughs> Isn't that right, baby Penny? She doesn't have any problems with hair loss, baby, do you? And then she just disappeared for several years. And I, I felt a loss, you know, when, when she stopped posting. A lot of people did. You know, content creators don't appreciate, don't appreciate how 
how valued they are sometimes and how quickly it is to make an emotional connection with somebody that you watch regularly. It's kind of like having a next door neighbor or a friend that you see every week. Um, and when, they, when they're not there anymore, you really notice it. And imagine my delight then when I saw her reviewing another piece, very gingerly reviewing another piece. I was so pleased that she was back, so pleased that she's at the stage of rebuilding her life um, and building up her confidence. You know, her channel was very um, popular because she was a beautiful woman and she had a great personality and she also had tremendous energy. And she chose wigs and hairstyles that really suited her, uh, that, were beca that became very useful reviews for us. We really found ourselves in her. And that's a beautiful thing. So Dawn, I hope that somehow you will watch this and, appre and appreciate just how, how valued you are, how pleased we are. I just want to say, welcome back, welcome home. <laughs> Welcome home. Your sisters, your wig sisters have really missed you. Hello again, everybody. This is a perfect example of allowing fear to control one's actions. Because I was absolutely determined to continue vlogging and making regular uploads. And no sooner had I made that decision, I started to immediately talk myself out of it. Does anybody else do that? You can be honest here. If you can't be honest here, where on earth can you be honest? Why do we do it? If we want to do something and it's fun and we enjoy it and it gives our life meaning, why do we stop ourselves from doing it? The length, the length of time it took me to allow myself to buy my first wig and then to wear my first wig out? How long did it take me to allow myself to call myself a wig wearer and be somebody that was committed to that? I like that kind of ethereal look. I like shimmery makeup. You know, instead of black, I kind of use this grey. And also, on the lid, instead of a darker colour, I kind of use this colour. It's called Cool Mink. It's got a lovely shimmer to it, and I do enjoy wearing shimmery eye. It's amazing to me that anybody ever, ever <laughs> organises themselves to do anything. And it's, it's, it's made me realise that in this life, you have to really make an effort. If you really want something, there's absolutely no doubt to me now that you have to be prepared to plow on regardless of what problems present themselves to you, what obstacles you need to overcome, because life is one big blooming obstacle as far as I can see. And there seems to be an endless amount of, of things that you have to figure out every single, every single day. But figure them out, you must. There's one thing in life that I can't live without. And that's a nice highlighter. Any highlighter. It's a lovely creamy one. And I put it here, underneath my eyebrow. I just paint it across and it really catches the light nicely. Because, as you know, not only do I have to plough through any obstacles, but I also have to do it wearing shimmer and sparkle and a nice bright lip and, of course, fabulous hair. I know <clears throat> how pressurised life can be sometimes <clears throat> and the effect of that pressure, especially on women, especially on women in modern day life, can have a really drawing down effect, a, a drabifying effect, an ageing effect. 
and I work I work to counterbalance that for myself but also for those people around me I know I've said this a hundred times and it's so easy isn't it to, to just walk around in in drab grey clothing and thinning hair and no makeup and um, comfortable shoes of course it's practical it's comfortable it's easy but it's definitely not what I want for this world I remember um, I was making um, a review video and I, I do like to have a chat when I'm doing my own purchase reviews and I was saying you know how shocking 2020 had been how unexpected it had been how strange it was everything that we were going through <laughs> and I actually feel like continuing that sentence it's been it's been four years nearly since since the events of 2020 March 2020 it's almost been four years and I still feel that the events are coming thick and fast be it alien um, interaction um, wars uh, the cost of living crisis house prices plummeting or, or rising they don't even wait now for one um, issue to resolve before the next issue is piggybacking on that one so that it's just one thing after the next after the next thank goodness I don't have a television I don't have to listen to all of this look at this beautiful colour though yeah it's a neutral wintry stroke autumnal colour we're not in spring yet. Let's enjoy the winter season for as long as we can. I like to wear my pearl earrings that you're sitting on. Now what hair shall I wear today? I'm going to go to the library to return a book. I started reading a book by Iris Murdoch, it's downstairs, it's called The Philosopher's Pupil. It's very philosophical, too philosophical for me, I'm just not that bright. But there is something that I am really enjoying, it's called How We Might Live. And it's basically about William and Jane Morris, you know William Morris who did all of those artistic interiors, the arts and crafts movement, all of that sort of thing. He did some amazing um, woodblock wallpaper designs. Very famous, very well known everywhere. Well, I'm, I'm reading about how they lived at home and how Jane felt and dealt with being married to William Morris and really having her voice heard as far as the art that she achieved because she contributed to that movement quite considerably and of course she was a model for an artist called Gabriel Rossetti who she ended up apparently having an affair with although I haven't got to that bit I'm really excited about reading about that um, I love I love to know about anything to do with home women's lives how women can make the most of their life and, and be happy. But, but the one thing that I don't enjoy is the cut and thrust of modern life. Um, the more technological life becomes, the busier it seems to become. And the more I want to retreat into an analogue world. But of course you can't retreat completely into an analogue world because you can't live like that anymore. It's too far gone. Um, unless I went and joined um, the Quakers, but I don't think they'd have me. <sighs> what hair am I going to wear today before I drive you and myself round the twist? What hair do I fancy today? What do I fancy? Do I fancy a synthetic or real hair? I quite fancy a synthetic actually 
and something's telling me maybe I should go for Radiant Beauty. I have noticed a little bit of growth at the front of my head, but it's only a few millimeters long and I kind of can feel it. But you know, I don't allow myself to get excited about it anymore because I know that my hair is in a constant state of flux. It's either sitting there, not doing anything, thinking about doing something, or growing or falling out. You know, I, I can never sort of rely on growth, remaining growth. It's always, something's always got to happen to the blasted stuff. Putting these combs in my cap has been one of the best things I've ever done. And there's already actually a little sticky strip there. A lace kind of tape. Oh, I love it. Some of the hair sometimes gets stuck to the tape. And then I have to try and pull it out with this rat tail comb. And I pull out my own on the sides. I recently dyed my hair. And I create this little pillow of permatees here that what that disguises obviously the edge of the cap very well. A little bit at the back, mustn't forget the back, because everything's always focused on the front, isn't it? Nice, eh? Nice. Not bad. I'm happy. I think that this isn't too glamorous. I think it's casual enough, but done enough. I was going to put her up. I actually think that the cut of these these wigs is so is so good and the shape is so good that it's often a shame to mess around with it, you know, by putting a band in or something. I mean, for example, if I was wearing this topper, let's give it as an example. You can see it's straight down, right from the front, straight down. There's not much in it, it just looks like hair that's grown out. And that has its own charms and I absolutely love that. Now, wearing a band in that hair is really great. I don't know if you remember Screen Legend. It's a Jacqueline Smith wig. I love this wig. And I love the colour. It's got... Oops. It's got a lace front, but it's got close cap all you know, over the top. But it's got a pretty good lace front actually. Um, Permatease on the top. It's so stiff. <laughs> I'm going to wash her today and I'm going to deep condition her and I'll come back and show you what the end result is. Um, maybe I should actually put her on and see. The, the fibres always look so much better when, when you've brushed them out, but when you've worn them for longer than two minutes, literally two minutes, they start to stiffen up and clump. So I'm thinking maybe that the, the conditioner will, will help separate them. Don't you love her? I love her! I've always loved uh, Screen Legend. Sometimes she flips up and sometimes she flips down. I prefer her flipping in because she looks like a lob then. I love all of these descriptive words for bobs. She looks like a lob and I love a lob. <laughs> I love any kind of bob actually. I'm kind of a bit of a bob fiend. It's very difficult to get a good bob. If you've got your own biological hair, it's very difficult to get a good bob. So. I'm going to take the time to wash this. I can feel that she's a little bit dry and I bet you she'll start clumping in no time. 
So that's what I'm going to do. It's the following day now. Let's have a look to see how this screen legend has been bearing up. So she's been hanging upside down overnight. Let's take my phone, grab my phone. Let's go upstairs and try her on. Gosh, the sun is really shining this morning. It's so nice to have the sun out again. My plants are doing nicely. See, this one I'm actually training <laughs> to go up the wall. I'd love it to go up the wall and around the landing. <laughs> like it I like it I wonder whether I should wear her today yesterday I never did get to go to the library I decided to wait because I've ordered another book you see and I've got that Iris Murdoch to return but my book that I've ordered has come in now it's about Wally Simpson mm, it's called behind closed doors the tragic untold story of Wallace Simpson. So I'll be very interested to read what actually happened with her, especially after Edward died. She, she survived him, I think, by about 15 years. That's a long time, isn't it? It's amazing, isn't it, in life, how we make our choices and, 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 and after a, a certain point in our life, we've made all the big choices and decisions of our life. And then it's time to live with the consequences of our decisions. And that's when it dawns on you that you're properly an adult and you have to face the decisions that you've made. Okay, so I don't think I need a jacket or a coat today, so I'm not going to have too much rubbing on the back of this piece but I wore Radiant Beauty yesterday I, I wore her for the first time for almost a year I reckon not since well at least six months not since early summer last year and I put her on and she she was gorgeous I put a post up on Instagram how beautiful how natural she was your mind plays tricks on you, I think, as a wig wearer, because when I think about putting on a certain piece, like I was with Radiant Beauty, I, I in my mind, she was this very dark, flat-coloured, crispy um, set curls, you know, in my mind, I, I visualised that that's what she looked like. But then I got her out of the box, and those curls, she's got a net on her. Those curls were okay. They they combed out and looked soft. <laughs> and the colour was, you know, multi-dimensional and lovely and soft. Yes, it was it's a it's a it's dark chestnut and it's definitely a, a darker or medium brunette, but the highlights were really doing their thing and I must stop doubting the artistry that goes into making these wigs. They, they really do look good. They really do look natural. Oh! Now a friend of mine, a very good friend, contacted me a few days ago because it's her 50th birthday coming up. And she told me that she was a little bit concerned because um, she felt that her front, front hairline was receding. Those were her words. Uh, she's still got plenty of hair.
but she wanted a clipping fringe and she wanted a ponytail. Now she bought a ponytail some time ago, but it was shorter, so she wants to buy a longer one. I don't think I ever saw her wear that ponytail, not once. And I think maybe she's fallen into the, the trap of maybe not being so confident with putting it on or going out wearing it or <clears throat> trying to keep it for best, you know, and then of course we all know best never comes. I wonder whether I should have a little, a little talk with her about how, how she um, feels about the prospect of losing, or, or or at least her hair becoming thinner. It's not uncommon, you know, for women our age to to have thinning hair. I do see some women our age who've got absolutely thick hair, really thick and gorgeous, and they're very lucky. You know, those are the sort of women that can go grey, but they actually look good because because they've got they've got substance to their hair. It doesn't it doesn't look like a witch's greying <laughs> sparse head. Anyways, I guess I I'll go to the library and then I'm gonna because I've I've been on annual leave all week. I haven't. I've had a, f a few admin things to do and a few social things to do. Today was wide open. I have nothing arranged today. And I woke up this morning and I had two consecutive thoughts. The first one is, oh, I've got absolutely nothing arranged today. I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. And the second thought was, hey, I've got nothing arranged. I'm not going to feel guilty about sitting on my sofa and reading my book. It's mid-morning on Sunday. I'm getting ready to go to lunch at a friend's house. Stephen is coming with me. She's invited us for lunch and she's also invited a friend. A lady, a Spanish lady apparently, and I don't think I've ever met her before. I am going to be wearing a red lip, but as you can see, I've opted for quite neutral makeup, quite subtle. Nothing really to write home about. I think I need a little bit more blusher to give myself a little bit more colour. Let me take you to the mirror. I always get compliments on this dress. I've decided to wear these shoes, court shoes. I mean, you know, people will tell you that it's cool to have this casual chic, you know, and I could wear jeans um, and some sort of cool shoes and a nice slouchy jumper, but I don't want to wear that. I, I want to honour the invitation and turn up bringing a little bit of a dressed up look, um, introducing a little bit of glamour and actually I've, I've opted for Gabor Radiant Beauty again. This one is in dark chestnut. Stephen, are you leaving now? Yeah. So we've got to be there between 12.30 and 1. Okay, we'll be there. Okay. Well then. Bye. Bye. He's going to stop off. He's going to stop off at Waitrose to get some drinks. Um, I just, I never usually get an opportunity to dress up. And, and by dress up, I, I specifically mean, you know, wear a pair of heels, have a little bit more of a glamorous kind of hairstyle. I think the curls lend that quite well. I'm very happy to wear these very neutral um, suede beige heels. Let me show you. I mean, you know, truly complement my skin color really well. Very flattering shape and suede. I've always loved suede and I've also loved patent. Not so keen on plain leather, but you know, it depends on the shoe, I guess. So I'm very happy to be dressing up for this occasion and really pleased that I'll have time to spend with Stephen in a social way. That's also really important for us. Our daughter came to visit us yesterday. It was really nice spending time with her. 
And this marks the end of my week's annual leave. Um, I've done a lot of resting, I've done a lot of sleeping and reading. I've really caught up on things that I've been very interested with. So, as you know, I washed Screen Legend a couple of days ago and I showed you the result. I just wanted to show you, simply to show you what the Permatease looks like. You know, if anything, I really feel that the washing of this piece has helped the permatease to die down. So I'm going to make the beds and put on my jacket and pretty soon I have to leave the house. <laughs> 